let us start to discuss adapter signatures that you can create with multi-signatures. And this is a really amazing concept that allows you to hide some information. We remember from the first and second part of this video series the signature equation, which has this scalar k to it. And we remember that this was chosen completely arbitrary. This is completely random. Now let us look at B's signature equation, which was sp equals kb plus h times xb. And now we modify this equation a little bit. We compute the value sp prime, which is the same as sb, plus another scalar t. I already want to mention that the value t, which we are adding here, is the secret that we are trying to hide inside the adapter signature when using multi-signatures. Also, I want you to emphasize how strange this equation and this construction actually is. Remember the k value was chosen completely random. Now we have this random number and we're adding another number which we choose, which is the secret that we want to transport. The sum of this is another value which could have been already the random value that we started with. So to some degree it's really surprising that this construction makes sense. But if we remember what a complete signature is, it's not only the s value of our signature equation, but a signature also consists of the r value which committed to the k value. Now our random k value has this t part in it, so let us see how the r value of our signature changes. I claim that you would have to change the r value according to what you added to the nonce. Now we have rb prime which is the same as the r value before but you add t times g to it. You could actually say rb prime equals rb plus capital T. I'm claiming that the verification equation looks like this. sb prime times g has to be the same as rb prime plus hash times the key b and that sb prime comma rb prime is just a regular signature and looks like a regular signature. Let us try to understand why this is actually the verification equation. If I write down sb prime times g this is the same as sb times g plus t times g and sb times g we know this from our regular verification equation has to be the same as rb plus h times b and then t times g has to be capital T. We can already see that here we have the t value and the rb value, which is the rb prime value in the signature verification equation, which is exactly what I originally claimed. Oh, of course it should have been rb. Let's add some notations. So we call t, small t, as the payment secret, and small t times g equals big T, the payment point, which is uh, previously the payment hash, and the payment secret obviously would be the pre-image. B can use the adapter signature SB prime and add it to SA and uh, do the same with the nonce and this is a valid multi-signature and we call this adapter multi-signature SAB prime and RAB prime. Somehow A now gets aware of this multi-adapter signature. I claim that A can compute T as the following. It takes the signature and it subtracts its own partial signature and the previously known partial signature from B. As we know by definition, SAB prime is the same as SA plus SB prime. So let's just note this down and we subtract the two values that we had before, SA and SB. We see that in this equation, SA is there once added and once subtracted, so we can cancel this out. This only leaves us SB prime minus SB. We recall the definition of SB prime, which is SB plus T. And then again, we have to subtract SB. And this cancels out. So the thing that is left over is the adapter secret T. So let us try to visualize this again. There is A and B and A gets hold of the partial signature of B. And A can verify that this is actually something. A is able to spend from this multi-signature wallet because A obviously can compute SA. A sends over SA to B and B itself just produces SB prime by adding the secret T to SB. And from this obviously B can compute SAB prime, which is just adding these two signatures. Now, as before, if A gets aware of SAB prime, the values SA and SB are obviously known to A. So with the above equation, A can compute the adapter secret T. And A can also check if T times G is capital T, which is the payment point that A might have learned from B earlier. And remember, the payment point is the equivalent to the payment hash. I don't know about you, but I personally find this construction pretty dope. Just think about it, if B publishes the output from this multi-signature wallet, the people in the Bitcoin network don't know if it was a single address, a multi-sig address, they have no idea. And even better, the secret that was transported over to A 
is not visible to anybody else in the Bitcoin network. One reason why this is working is, of course, uh, by setting up a multi-signature address in Schnorr signatures, there's a communication protocol of how A and B exchange partial signatures. Also, I have omitted the hash function and what it should commit to. Also, I haven't really talked about the applications that come from the fact that I can hide the secret in there. I already called the secret the payment point and the payment secret. So if we use this construction instead of payment hashes in HTLCs, and probably we should not call them HTLCs anymore because they're not hashed anymore. We can build escrow services, we can do payment decorrelation, we can have multi-hop locks, we can also get rid of stuck payments. So there is a large variety of applications that come from this little trick. Maybe you want to know about this. And my question to you, since this channel is for the community, is do you want me to go into more details about multi-signatures and adapter signatures and the communication protocol on this? Or would you rather want me to explain how payment channels on the Lightning Network really work? I would obviously love to talk about both topics and even more topics, but I also have to keep a little bit track of my time. So since you are empowering this channel by your donations, by adding to my fundraiser and being Patreons, I want you to involve into the decision and ask you what you really want. And I really love the fact that this is a community thing. There was also Jonas Nick from Blockstream who was very open to uh, answer some of my questions and uh, helped me out to get a better perspective on these topics. So shout out to Jonas Nick and uh, thank you very much. As in part one and two, let's now look a little bit at the code. Let's start with our previous code base and take the print statement where we printed out the signature of key B, also together with the verification. And now we add the adapter secret. So we have t equals 13 and we do the addition in a function because we need this function later. And this function is quite easy. We just multiply t with g, which happens with this points dictionary. And then we add t to the s value. Remember that we have to do the modulo p operation. And then we have to add the previous nonce and the capital T value. After we have executed our function, we copy the line that displays the partial signature for key b. Now we change all the variables to display the partial adapter signature. And you can already see the signatures are changing. The first one is 2 comma m and the adapter signature is 15 comma c which uh, in the s value already is 13 more. Now we recall that a knows two partial signatures. The signature for key b and its own signature and we can see that the multi-signature that arises from this is 20d. We just check if this is actually a valid signature. Yes, it tells us this is a true signature. Now we look at the two partial signatures that B knows. Actually, B knows three, but I don't care about the signature SB anymore. And then we compute the multi-signature that arises from these two partial signatures that B knows. And we just copy the code from above and change the variable names to see how the multi-signature now would look like. Comparing the results, we see that our new multi-signature has the value 10, Q whereas the old multi-signature had the value 20, D. But both are true signatures. Now we compute the adapter secret by taking the multi-signature that B computed and subtract the partial signature of B and the partial signature of A. And again, we have to do the modular operation. And we see the adapter secret is 13, which was exactly the adapter secret that we wanted to use. Now we have a problem. What if B tricks and computes a different adapter secret. Remember, we wanted to use this, for example, for HTLC constructions, where the adapter secret also has an adapter point. And uh, let's see what happens in that case. In order to do this, I'm basically copy and pasting all the code that we used before, but I just changed the value t equals four. Obviously, the adapter signature of B also has changed. It now has the value six comma q in comparison to its old adapter signature 15 comma c and it results in a different multisig the new multisig would be 1 comma h in comparison to the other multisignature 10 comma q and now if you do the computation you see that the new secret was hidden in there this is obviously a big problem if you want to really use this in htlc's because then the adapter secret should really commit to the adapter point or to the payment point we can fix this by changing the hash values of our messages and uh, 
really look into more detail into the communications protocol, I would refer you to the scriptless script repository, which I also linked in the description of these videos. And if you run into problems reading these technical texts, then please let me know. I can easily do um, another video and continue on this series. But as I mentioned before, I could also continue and talk more about the construction of payment channels. Please feel free to be involved into this community and have a discussion of what you really want to learn about Bitcoin and the Lightning Network because I'm doing this channel for you and this is a community-driven project.